Hello, Simple Planes. This is Snow here. Um, I haven't really done much in the past few months um, because school has been catching up to me lately, and I really haven't had time to actually invest in making some new video content or new uploads. So, well, today I, some, I found some time to start working on something I wanted to do in Simple Planes for a really long time. So, I planned out a project I've since dubbed Project GMC, GMC being the abbreviation for Word um, Gun Motor Carriage. As you may have guessed, um, this project focuses on creating a gun motor carriage, or more specifically, a track vehicle that can carry an artillery piece. So there were certain technological aspects that I wanted to make sure that I was including in this project. This would include a functional drive, that is a functional engine and a transmission, and if possible, even a differential for the tracks. Then uh, what I wanted to do was link that drive up to a sprocket and try to make a track and suspension system so that I would have a tracked vehicle. Finally, to complete that G of GMC, I'm planning to add a functional realistic artillery piece to the vehicle. So I don't have specifics in mind about what kind of artillery piece I'm going to add, but now keep in mind that I'm not going to really base my project off any pre-existing vehicle. Like, um, as you may guess, like the GMC is not going to really be something like the M10 GMC or M36 GMC, but more focus on the technology involved in creating a project like this. So I've already explored this area multiple times. Um, if you've been following me, um, I've, I've seen with my older experimental builds like the Crusty suspension, but this time I'm trying to make it into one comprehensive unit as a demonstration of Simple Plane's capabilities, and also because um, the engineering process involved, if you can call it engineering, I guess, um, it's, it's a really enjoyable process for me. And um, in order to get this project started, so I thought I moved from the inside out. Previously, when I attempted a similar project, I had issues because I was moving from the outside in, and that resulted in dimension issues. Um, this time, in order to avoid that issue, I'm going to make sure that doesn't happen and work from the inside out. So what you're seeing in the background right now is some building footage for the first thing I'm working on, which is the engine. So after numerous considerations, I opted to use a V6 design for the best mixture of compactness and functionality. Because um, um, it's not really evident, but the number of pistons you have in um, the Simple Planes piston engines does kind of scale with the amount of power you can get out of your piston engines. As I added note, um, this build footage, in my opinion, it's some really good reference material for beginning builders to take some tips and tricks out of, so I'll be making sure that I'll be adding some more commentary about what I'm doing and how I'm doing things as we go along. Hope you enjoy. So what you're seeing here right now is I'm trying to put together the most basic components of my piston engine. So um, what you see here is that I am putting together the rotators and the kind of the bases for the pistons, and then I'm adding those pistons as I need. Um, I'm gonna go up do that until I have about six pistons, but then I realized that um, my, my rotator is a bit too long, and then in order to ensure that I have a compact engine, I need to make it shorter, so I um, go and scale the rotator so that now they have 0.5 lengths, and they match the 0.25 fusel lengths of the um, piston bases, if that's what you want to call them. So now I've um, done that, and then I've, I'm doing the reprocessing kind of sort for the um, pistons, and I'm re-adding all everything until I have um, the basic, basic, I guess, um, skeleton for my V6 engine. Now, if you've been paying some attention to how I've been building this engine, you can see that it's rather quite similar to what Spiritus Raptor has done on his engines. Um, and indeed, and I've took a lot of reference from his designs, because um, primarily because they're the only ones I've found that are actually reliable and work well, so I'm making my own iteration of it. Then largely the design goes to um, Spirit after his own design, so um, all credits goes to him. So let's see, what I'm gonna do next is now I'm gonna try and work on more of the crankshaft. I'm gonna add some of the rotators and whatnot I need for the crankshaft to work. So now that I've got the um, piston part of my piston engine done, I'm gonna start working on the crankshaft. What I'm doing here right now is reshaping a um, fuselage part so that it has a circular top and a hard bottom so that um, it has more kind of crankshaft bottom-ish shape, I should say. Um, I'm gonna add this part to each piston so that I can start working on the crankshaft. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start um, changing the direction of my piston so that they have alternating pull and push directions that later I can have that reciprocating motion that I need for my piston engine. 
I think that this part of me building is going to offer some really good tips for beginners because um, if you see here that um, I'm taking this fuser's block and I'm making it shorter and I'm trying to add it to this um, fuselage. Now what I do here is that I realize that I made a bit of mistakes so because like um, I don't want extra parts. I want to reduce the part count as much as possible if um, I can do that. But then what I'm doing right now is adding more part counts and I realize that it's pretty much pointless. So I then go on to remove it and then I just start work right away with the rotator. So especially in simple planes, if you're building, you want your build to be as low part count as possible while retaining the functionality of that you intend to make. So um, always experiment with different combinations that you can reduce um, part count and then you can do the best functionality out of. Now, there isn't going to be much of um, commentary for this section just because um, there isn't going to be anything significant going on other than the fact that I'm just putting my build together and completing the crankshaft part of my engine. Now, but then one thing you should now take note of is that as soon as I finish my first functional part of my crankshaft, I begin to go into the um, actual world design and then I'm going to test it right away. I want to see how it works right away as soon as I've completed this first functional part of my engine. It's actually a really important tip for more beginning builders just because um, you don't want to get along far into your build without having like tested that your first functional or like some key functional parts of it are working properly as intended. So as you see right now, I'm gonna um, try testing it out, see, it that, see that it, like all the parts interact as I intend them to. And that's really a habit you should get used to of doing just because you don't really wanna waste time just having to um, go find a problem that was um, already like made a long time ago and you can't find it and you have to just restart your build. And that's terribly disappointing. No, if it wasn't obvious enough, um, I already found a pretty big problem. It's not working as intended. Then the good thing is, I've already found this problem long before I've gotten far into the build, so that I don't need to try to find this problem way, way later when there's too much parts I have to care about, and then I'll have to restart the build. That's terribly, terribly just annoying in many, many ways. And I've just saved a lot of time and effort by um, pre-testing my build um, as soon as I got this functional part online. So if you're really into this kind of this mechanical side of simple planes, you should really take note of what I'm doing right now. Watch closely, because what I watch what I do right after I connect this um, small rotator part to the other rotator. After I flip it around, I go back to the um, attachments mod, and then I check my connections right away. And I can see that my connections are done properly, and then anything isn't connected in a strange way that would make on this craft not work. This is particularly important when you're trying to build um, things that are functional and moving just because the connections matter a lot in simple planes and how um, the parts interact with each other so and even even if you're not building on um, any like functional kind of builds it's always important because you don't want your um, wing to be connected to something else that might be moving and then such as a custom landing gear and then that, that's going to cause problems so you always want to avoid that so whenever you're building on um, Make sure that you have the um, what was it, designer suit mod and then uh, you're checking your connections as you go by. Now that I've checked that my um, first part of my crankshaft is fully functional and working properly, um, I go back to the designer and now I'm going to duplicate everything I've done in the same fashion I um, um, built my first part of my crankshaft. Now, as I do this, I keep monitoring my connections and as I mentioned before, monitoring those connections are really important just because you don't want your parts to move in a strange way, especially in a moving build like this. Now, um, after I've done that, I make sure that everything is connected properly and then I know that I'm going to test it out again just to see that everything is working properly. Keep testing, keep testing. It's a really important habit um, that you'll um, know 
later on it's it's going to save your life a lot of times a lot of effort a lot of time and general frustration will not occur if you know uh, when to test at the right times Now, I'm getting into some XML modding here. Um, what I'm going to do right now is really simple, but it, it, a lot of XML modding just comes from personal experience and knowing when and where to do it. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to connect the middle on uh, crankshaft parts together so that they move in unison and so that it can, can form a uniform motion, which is particularly important for engine, right? So what I'm doing right now is I'm using the um, what was it again? Um, the over overlord mod. And I'm gonna I'm trying I'm gonna check every um part ID. I'm trying to edit, and then I'm trying to add that to my XML file, and then I, I'm manually um forming those connections myself inside the XML file, just because um so that um my middle crankshaft parts, the ones I'm high, one clicking on and checking right now, are fully connected. Now, if I do this, um, when I turn my engine on. All the crankshaft, all parts of the crankshaft will move in unison. I can produce um, some power for uh, anything what I'm trying to power. Now there are other methods of um, adding in connections, namely the designer suit mod has a connections editor feature in under the attachments tab. However, um, in my case, I haven't found it to be terribly useful nor uh, very reliable. So I tend to go back to the XML files and manually edit them myself just because I know that works on 100%. Now we're back with some RxW modding, but it's really simple this time. It's more connections editing. All I'm doing is I'm trying to connect this output shaft part to the rest of my crankshaft. And after I've done that through XML modding, I'm just gonna um, go ahead and test it out in the um, world build. And I can see that as I power the engine, also the crankshaft part and the also the output shaft are moving as I intended to. Of course, the, one of the struggles building a piston engine in simple planes is getting uh, the parts to move in a single direction, so alternating between directions. It appears uh, for now, I think um, that's pretty much good enough. And then I'm gonna go ahead and check that everything is connected properly. And then I'm just gonna go add in the back part of the output shaft so that I can have a stable rig, which will be done in a future episode. But for now, it seems really good to me, so I'm gonna go ahead and save it. While I am doing more XML modding here, it's nothing too important or flashy. I'm just I'm doing the same thing I did before. I'm adding the connections for the um, but the back part of the output shaft to the rest of my crankshaft. So now I can complete the whole crankshaft and piston setup. Well, that's just about enough for this video. I'm gonna conclude that right here. Hope you enjoyed the video. Have a good day.